Hello everyone, I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about uh, starting torque of single phase injection motor. We will derive one equation for starting torque of single phase induction motor. In case of single phase induction motor, we know that uh, single phase induction motor is not a self start motor because we have a resultant torque at the starting is equal to zero. So we have to introduce uh, one starting winding or auxiliary winding. We have current with respect to voltage generated by main winding and by starting winding. Both are having a different angle with the voltage. So this way we can with the help of auxiliary winding we can have a two phase current and accordingly the starting torque will be generated. Now let us see for main winding we have certain data for main winding Rm that is total resistance and that is equal to Rsm plus RRM dash where RSM that is a resistance of the stator winding M for main winding plus RRM that is a rotor respect to stator so this is our total resistance of the main winding we have XLM that is a leakage reactance for the main winding and we have ZM that is total locked rotor impedance meaning is at the starting we have total impedance and that must be equal to square of RM plus square of XLM and under root. So we know that how to calculate impedance that is a addition of a phasor addition of a RM and XLM and we have ISM that is current in the main winding at the starting and that is equal to V, V is the applied voltage and divided by total impedance at the starting that is ZM. So based on these values if we draw the phasor diagram then let us see we have x-axis and we have y-axis y-axis we are taking as a voltage axis and this is our starting current of the main winding during starting and that is known as ISM just we have seen and it is equal to V divided by total impedance that is ZM so we have resistance total resistance of the main winding we have leakage reactance of the main winding and we have ZM that is total impedance that is a phasor addition of RM and XLM. So if we divide V that is applied voltage divided by total impedance then we have ISM that is starting current of the main winding and it is making an angle with the voltage that is theta M. M is for the main winding. So theta m that is a phase angle between applied voltage and current at starting and that is equal to tan inverse xlm divided by zm. Tm that is total number of turns for the main winding and kwm that is winding factor. Same way we have certain data for the starting winding. Ra that is total resistance A that is for the auxiliary winding starting winding is also known as the auxiliary winding so RA that is total resistance and that is equal to RSA plus R, RA dash where RSA that is a stator resistance for the auxiliary winding and RRA that is a rotor resistance with respect to stator resistance with the stator of the auxiliary winding. Then we have XLA that is a leakage reactance 
ZA that is total log the rotor impedance and that is equal to square of R square plus XL square and under root and same way we have ISA that is current in the starting winding at starting and that must be given by V divided by total impedance that is ZA. Now if we add values of ISA that is starting current of the auxiliary winding then we have and this is known as ISA. Now we can observe that uh, starting current in the auxiliary winding it is making an angle with the voltage axis that is less compared to the angle which is made by ISM that is current in the main winding starting current in the main winding the reason is we have designed both the winding in such a way that uh, auxiliary winding is having a high resistance and a low reactance so it is making a very less angle with the voltage axis while main winding it is having a low resistance but high reactance so it is making an angle greater than which is made by auxiliary winding so this way we have ra that is a total rotor resistance for the auxiliary winding we have xla that is leakage reactance for the auxiliary winding and we have ZA. So V divided by ZA that is our starting current for the auxiliary or starting winding and it is making an angle with the voltage axis that is theta A and theta A that is uh, less compared to theta M that we have discussed. So theta A that is phase angle between applied voltage and current at starting and that is uh, equal to 10 inverse XLA divided by ZA. TA that is total number of turns for the starting winding. KWA that is winding factor for the starting winding. And we have a K that is a ratio. Ratio of effective starting winding turns to main winding turns. And it is given by product of TA multiplied by KWA divided by TM and KWM. Now the important point that uh, with the help of starting winding and we have a main winding now we have generated two phase current two phase current and because of two phase current we have flux that is uh, also out of phase to each other and accordingly the starting torque will be generated. We have angle between starting current of the auxiliary winding and starting current of the main winding and that is given as theta m minus theta a theta m is greater it is making a more or great a larger angle with the voltage so we know that now starting torque starting torque is proportional to the value that is ism that is a starting current and sine of theta m minus theta a so angle between both the starting current that is theta m minus theta a that is most important the greater the angle we have larger the starting torque so now let us derive an equation for starting torque starting torque ts it can be given by this equation that is 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by p p is the number of poles k k that is a turns ratio multiplied by r rm dash that is a rotor resistance in terms of stator divided by f that is frequency multiplied by both the current ism that is starting current of the main winding isa that is starting current of the auxiliary winding or starting winding and sine theta m minus theta a this equation does not take into account the effect of magnetizing current hence we have to use a multiplication factor and that is known as a CR. We have to use one additional multiplication factor and CR that is normally can be taken as equal to K. K is the turns ratio of the auxiliary winding to main winding. Now we introduce a multiplication factor. So 
equation for the starting torque that is uh, 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by p multiplied by k multiplied by cr multiplied by r rm dash divided by f and we have product of ism and isa sin theta min theta m minus theta a so similar equation only we have introduced an a, multiplic a multiplication factor now we can substitute the values of ism and isa we know that ism that is a v divided by zm and isa that is v applied voltage v divided by total impedance that is za so our equation of starting torque now becomes the change is a we have v square divided by zm and product of zm and za that is total log impedance of the main winding and auxiliary winding remaining equation remain same so equation of starting torque now it is changed to 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by p multiplied by k multiplied by cr multiplied by r rm dash and divided by f and we have introduced the value of isn and isa so that is v square divided by zm and za and for sine theta m minus theta a we have introduced sine theta m cos theta a minus sin theta a cos theta m so now if we introduce values of sin theta m theta a cos theta m theta a in terms of resistance and impedance then the equation for starting torque can be changed as now start equation for starting torque that is 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by p multiplied by k multiplied by cr multiplied by r rm dash divided by f multiplied by v square multiplied by v square and multiplied by r a x l m minus r m x l a these are the values we have introduced for sine theta m cos theta a and sine theta a cos theta a and divided by z m square and z is square so this way we have derived an equation for a starting torque we assume that the parameters of the main windings are fixed and as for the starting torque equation we have three variables because of starting winding and that is uh, Tense ratio k, starting current of the auxiliary winding that is ISA, and we have angle theta a, which is starting current is making with the applied voltage. So if we design our starting winding accordingly, then the required starting torque can be obtained. So in our next lecture. We will see the design of starting winding for the split phase type of single fish induction motor and then onward we will design a starting winding for the capacitor split single phase induction motor also but the equation for starting torque that we have derived in this lecture that remains same the same equation can be applied for split phase as well as for capacitive phase, uh, split single phase induction motor. So I stop here. Thank you for watching my video. Keep watching. Thank you very much.